Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Leanne McAdoo. It is July 24th, 2013. Take a look at what's coming up on the show tonight. Tonight, on the InfoWars Nightly News, Monsanto wins again. Allowable levels of cancer-causing glyphosate increased. We'll introduce you to the black George Zimmerman the media doesn't want you to know about. Plus, the Obama administration spends your tax dollars to demand a 32-page disaster plan for a magician's rabbit. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight's top story. The elite corporate clique is protected over and over again in Washington, and this time it's another win for Monsanto. The U.S. has raised the allowable levels of companies' pesticide in crops. Despite a number of studies linking exposure to the chemical glyphosate with diseases including types of cancer, the EPA is increasing the amount of glyphosate allowed in oil, seed, and food crops. Through the EPA's new standards, the amount of allowable glyphosate in oilseed crops such as flax, soybeans, and canola will be increased from 20 parts per million to 40 parts per million, which GM Watch acknowledge is over 100,000 times the amount needed to induce breast cancer cells. Additionally, the EPA is increasing limits on allowable glyphosate in food crops from 200 parts per million to 6,000 parts per million. Now, in the past, Monsanto has long defended their use of the chemical, saying, we are very confident in the long track record that glyphosate has. It has been very, very extensively studied. Well, indeed, Monsanto, in, according to an independent study concluded in April, the negative impact on the body is insidious and manifests slowly over time as inflammation damages cellular systems throughout the body. Consequences are most of the diseases and conditions associated with a Western diet, which include gastrointestinal disorders, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, depression, autism, infertility, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. Man, it pays to have cronies at the Capitol when you are running a corrupt and controversial empire. Let's take this business of fracking, for example. That production process involves the injection of fluids and toxic chemicals into oil or gas wells at a very high pressure. Now, this has obviously raised concern over the potential to poison our drinking water. Well, who was the very first company to experiment with hydraulic fracturing way back in 1947? Halliburton. That's right. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency is in place to regulate our drinking water. But Bush and Cheney exempted Halliburton in 2005 from meeting the significant water protection regulations set by the EPA. It does pay Leanne to have friends in high places like the Capitol all over the United States. They've had big pharma front men on the air the last week saying do not give Jenny McCarthy a show on The View. It's terrible. Her son was brain damaged and she investigated and thought that it might be vaccines and let's just ignore all that and because she stood up for herself and, and her son and all the other autistic children, she is evil. And now the Toronto Health Department, not just uh, our own government's trying to kick her off the air before she even gets on the air, but now foreign governments are weighing in saying she's going to cause deaths. You know who's going to cause deaths? People like Rick Perry, who lied and said it was the law seven years ago to take the Gardasil shot that the insert says doesn't even protect you from the papillomavirus and killed a bunch of people in the trials and has killed many since then and maimed others and given people autoimmune diseases on record. Japan just last week banned Gardasil in Japan. India did a two-year trial and said, we're banning this, but oh no, Jenny McCarthy, she's going to kill people if she gets a show on The View, which isn't even going to be about vaccines. I've been on that show. Those hosts are scripted and controlled. This is the thought police here in America. They don't want government people blowing the whistle on corruption. They don't want citizens speaking out, and they don't want mothers who were concerned to get their own show because, God forbid, she might talk about how we've gone from one 
in 25,000 30 years ago having autism spectrum disorders to now, ladies and gentlemen, one in less than 60, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. The truth is the studies are all out there. They've tried to discredit some of the studies. Turns out that's a fraud. We know the truth. Mercury in the vaccines, the adjuvants, the rest of it, absolutely has been linked to brain damage and autoimmune problems across the board. We know vaccines have been filled with cancer viruses since back during the days of the first polio vaccine and SV40. Look it up. These are facts. These are stubborn things. And we know it's getting worse and worse and worse. And now we have shows like uh, God, Guns, and Automobiles that is just mildly uh, libertarian with my friend uh, Eric Mancal Muller and his brother. I mean, my son loves this show. It's hilarious. And what's amazing is, even though Mancow's wacky, it, he's not acting. He is this wacky in real life. The White House-run Media Matters tried to keep that from going on the air on History Channel and brags they helped get two pro-gun shows on Discovery that had top ratings canceled. They're canceling pro-gun TV shows in America, and Jenny McCarthy cannot have a show on The View if they have their way. It is a bunch of control freaks that are ganging up together against Jenny McCarthy and countless others to do this. So let's stand up for her. I happen to know people that know her. She says she is a patriot and she's a listener of this show. We've been that close to getting her on. So it's time to stand up for Jenny McCarthy and her courage to stand up against what's happening with the autism. Now, back to InfoWars Nightly News and Leanne McAdoo sitting right next to me. So if you are a big, nasty corporation wrecking the environment and just running corrupt business practices, you don't have to worry about any government interference with what you're doing. But if you're just a small-time business owner, be prepared to be taxed to death. Kind of like this magician who the Obama administration has required that he submit a 32-page disaster plan for his rabbit. A small-time magician from Missouri that does magic shows for kids was absolutely horrified when he learned that the Obama administration is requiring him to submit a disaster plan for the rabbit that he uses in his shows. The U.S. Department of Agriculture requires the rabbit to be licensed, which is weird enough, but where things enter the truly bizarre is a new USDA rule seven years in the making. Marty must have a rabbit disaster plan in place by July 29, 2013 in case of calamity such as flooding, earthquake, landslide, mudslide, avalanche, wildfire, or an intentional attack, just to name a few examples. My country is broke, Mr. Hahn says. We are out of money, and now the government is spending time and money worrying about an emergency plan for a bunny rabbit. So the U.S. is planning to send weapons to Syria in a war they know is going to end in a stalemate. It's going to cost taxpayers up to a billion dollars per month. Actually, that reminds me of today's daily quote. It says, rich man's war, poor man's blood. And that was by Anonymous. So they're going to start a war with Syria, and they are going to pay for it by taxing magicians. That's right, because we don't even have any money. We just print it out of thin air. We pull rabbits out of hats, and we just print money that doesn't exist. And then we have our mainstream media minions performing sleight of hand to distract you from what's really going on. Now, this whole past week, we've been focusing on Trayvon and, and the George Zimmerman trial, and the media kept asking over and over again, well, what would have happened if Trayvon was white? Would the same thing would have happened well, you know what, the, the mainstream media failed to remind you that that exact scenario did actually happen a few years ago when a black neighborhood watchman shot an unarmed white teen. It's the black George Zimmerman the media doesn't want you to know about. In April of 2009, Mr. Roderick Scott awoke at 3 a.m. to the sounds of three young men breaking into cars on his street. He called the police and went down the street to make sure the young men didn't flee before the police arrived. He shouted at them to freeze and told them that the police were coming soon. But that's when 17-year-old Christopher Servini rushed at Mr. Scott, uttering, I'll get you or I'll get him. Now, Scott fired twice, killing the teenager. Now, the trial that followed was, again, a case of prosecutorial overreach as they tried to charge Mr. Scott with manslaughter. 
Fortunately for him, a jury of his peers agreed with him that he did only what was needed to protect himself. Now, afterward, the prosecutor opined, I just hope it's not a message to this community that you have the right to shoot an unarmed 17-year-old kid for breaking into a car. Now, the problem with that is that Mr. Scott did not shoot young Christopher Cervini for breaking into his car, but for attacking him. Now, there was no white uproar about the killing of a young white man by the hands of a black man with a hero complex. Al Sharpton and the NAACP and the department, the Justice Department didn't show up to a rally. The trial was just treated as a tragic situation that a young man brought on himself by turning to violence. Now, the media picks and chooses what stories are going to make national headlines based on whatever the government's agenda is of the day. So George Zimmerman killing one boy was huge. We covered that for a year. But it's not a big deal that at least 400 people, including a chief of police, have been killed by the guns that were supplied during Fast and Furious. It's also not a big deal that the railroad serial killer was let go by police time and time again because of his illegal immigrant status. No, that's not a big deal because the Obama administration is really trying to push through this immigration reform. And immigration reform could be the very reason that it wasn't an important thing for the mainstream media to report about a 13-year-old girl who was kidnapped and gang-raped by at least 10 men here recently in Austin. Our reporter is on the scene with that story. Here at the settlement home in Austin, Texas, where a 13 year old girl allegedly escaped this facility, was offered a ride by some men that she did not know who took her to an apartment complex. And according to KENS San Antonio, it happened right here at the Avalon Palms apartment complex, where a 13 year old girl was abducted, brought to this apartment complex, and allegedly raped multiple times by multiple attackers. As many as 10 men could have been involved in the incident, many of which are said to have filmed the incident on their cell phones. Now, after the alleged attack, the young girl was let go, was able to use one of the attacker's cell phones to phone a friend. That didn't work out, and the young lady actually ended up at the house of another woman who let her smoke crack in her residence. Now, at least some of the men alleged in the attack were illegal immigrants. So I bring this up because we've seen before illegal immigrants being let off of crimes because of their unique cultural heritage. So with the settlement home under investigation and three suspects already in custody, hopefully we can find justice for this little girl. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now coming up after the break, Gigi Ernetta will be speaking with Larry Elder, who will talk about the mainstream media's agenda and their use of the race card during the Zimmerman trial. And then stick around because I'll be back with this evening's News Blitz. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News. And over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. ProPure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is a revolutionary system, and I am so pleased to be able to introduce it to you. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. In the last 20 years, companies have developed technologies that will cut out classical fluoride, sodium fluoride with a secondary filter because sodium fluoride and its derivatives are so incredibly tiny, some of it still gets through, so you've got to add a secondary fluoride filter onto it, which still doesn't cut out some types of fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, ProPure for two years 
has been quietly developing this with scientists and engineers. It was designed in the U.S. They only have factories that can make this in England. So it's made in England, and this is the only filter that not only cuts out the other bad contaminants and also the fluoride in one step, it cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the system you need to add to all of the ProPure systems that you've gotten from InfoWarsStore.com. The new Pro One filter element does it all. Water, fluoride, and other heavy metals. This is two-stage filtration in one filter element. To be clear, Pro One water filters designed and created by ProPure are the only gravity-fed filters out there, period, that don't just cut out so-called sodium fluoride, but cut out what is added to most water supply systems, and that is hydrofluorosilicic acid, which is a hopped-up, energized form of fluoride that is literally dozens of times more deadly to your body. That's what's being added to almost every municipal water supply, not just here in the United States, but in Canada, England, the UK in general, and much of Europe. New Pro One filter elements are good for more than 2,400 gallons, blowing away the competition. The Pro Pure Pro One is a revolution in gravity-fed filters. Take advantage of this today. It's a win-win. Support the InfoWar by purchasing it from InfoWarStore.com. Support the broadcast and get the lowest price out of the gates anywhere. So no matter where you live in the world, it is time to get the latest development in gravity-fed water filtration, up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. No other filter can cut any of that out. Only ProPure and their new system, Pro One. All available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. They love the fact that it supercharges the GMOs that you're eating. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. The race card is being used a lot right now in the media to divert from things that are really important. For example, Benghazi, the IRS, different things happening in Washington, D.C. But to clarify it a little bit, we have Larry Elder joining us tonight. Larry, what is your perspective on the Justice Department funding protest against George Zimmerman, even before he's been indicted? Well, there's apparently some sort of program that was set up when they set up the Civil Rights Commission, and the idea is when there are areas that are so-called hotspots, they send people there. And now there's still a waste of time, a waste of taxpayers' money. I'm not terribly offended by it. Not that much money was spent, uh, but it is a program that's stupid and, and useless. We shouldn't have it. You don't think it affected the trial at all? I, I don't think so. Uh, you saw how the trial turned out, uh, even though Angela Corey uh, brought these charges, never should have. In my opinion, I agree with Alan Dershowitz. She probably should be brought up on sanctions because apparently she hid the ball for the other side and didn't present documentary evidence and photo evidence till right before the trial. She's in trouble. Yeah, well, that's true. And why was the mainstream media trying to make it all about race? What's your perspective on that? Well, because that's the mainstream media's mantra. Race, racism remains a major problem in America, and frankly, not even racism, anti-black racism uh, by white people. That's all they care about. If there's racism about Hispanics, because we have gang violence here in L.A. where Hispanic and black gangs are killing each other, that doesn't seem to bother anybody in terms of making national news. But if it's a white guy who does something against a black person, that 
becomes news. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the media loves to uh, run with these stories, uh, racism, racism, racism. That's why uh, Hollywood made this fraudulent movie called Hurricane about a guy who frankly murdered three people. That's why USA Today ran for all those uh, days and weeks uh, two years ago claiming that black churches were being burned. It turns out that USA Today red face, part of the expression, had to apologize because black churches weren't being burned, but it was some fraudulent story which for reasons that escaped me somehow became a national mantra. It's the same thing with Duke Lacrosse. That was a fraud. Genesis 6 was a fraud. And this is a fraud. Well, and, and it's really about, well, they're trying to make it about race, but the bottom line is they're, they're not talking about all the things that are happening in Chicago. That, that's one well, thing. Well, yeah, and there have been I mean, 480 uh, uh, people murdered uh, since Trayvon Martin was killed uh, in one city alone. Seventy-five percent, by the way, of those homicides are uncleared, meaning they're, they're unsolved. Where are the cameras? It seems to me that at least in the case of Trayvon Martin, the Martins know what happened to their, to their son. In Chicago, 75% of these homicides are unsolved. How many crying mothers and fathers are there in Chicago? Nobody seems to give a damn about it. Last weekend alone, we had at least six. Yeah. And we had, I think, 17 with injuries, but, you know, it, it, they're just not going to talk about it. And why is it not, let's talk about black on black, or let's talk about Hispanic and black or because Asian? It's, it's easier to blame other people. If we were to talk about black on black crime, you have to get into the roots. And the roots is uh, the social pathology, and the root of that is not having a dad in the house. In 1965, Daniel Patrick Moynihan wrote a book called The Negro Family, A Case for National Action. He's a lefty. He's a Democrat. Later on became a, a Democrat from, uh, from New York. And in that book at the time, he said 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. If we don't get a handle around this, this is going to be horrific for the black community and horrific for the country. Well, fast forward now, 75% of black kids are born outside of wedlock. 35% of white kids are. Uh, this is a neutron bomb dropped on the, on the population, and we need to reverse that. Uh, and let me tell you something. The LA Times had a poll back in the mid-'80s, and poor people and non-poor people were asked the following question. Do you believe that young women get on welfare to have additional benefits. The majority of non-poor people said, oh, no, that's unfair. However, 64% of poor people said yes. We are incentivizing people into marrying the government. We're allowing men to abandon their financial moral responsibility, and the left has done this. And instead of acknowledging it, they can't do that, so they talk about things like racism, sexism, and high-capacity magazines, anything to divert your attention from the real problem, which is the meltdown of the family, which has been aided and exacerbated by the left. And, and you touch a little bit about that in your book, Dear Father, Dear Son, correct? Yeah, I, I do. And the reason I wrote that book is because my dad and I had a rotten relationship. Uh, for 10 years, we didn't speak to each other. And I, it took me until I was 25 years old to appreciate the fact that he was in the house working very hard all those times. Okay, he was a little grumpy. He wasn't Ward Cleaver, but he was a good man. But he was, was working lucky. real hard. I mean, wasn't he working well, two jobs? Buddy, he worked yeah. two full-time jobs as a janitor, cooked for a family on the weekend, and went to night school to get his uh, degree, uh, to get his uh, high school degree because he dropped out of school when he was in the eighth grade. The point behind the book, though, is his father uh, uh, was, was abusive. He, my, my dad doesn't know who his biological father is. He was raised in a home where his mother had a series of abusive boyfriends, and still my dad did not rob and maim and steal. And I asked him why, and he said back in those days you didn't have a bunch of people like Al Sharpton telling you you were a victim, nor did you have welfare. You had to bust your butt and you had to make it. And my dad believes that welfare is one of the worst things that ever, quote, came down the pike, close quote. He used to always tell me that. Oh, I believe that. And it's kind of a media avalanche, too. They seem to be pushing the big rock, just making it go faster, too. It hasn't changed very much in the last, probably the last 10 years, it's gotten worse, especially with social media. Well, and the fact is that a story that's uh, a fraudulent story can, as you know, uh, go around the world real quickly. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of evidence uh, never came out. For example, did you know that his uh, prom date was black? Most people don't know that. He had a black business partner. Most people don't know that. Uh, and he went to bat for a ho black homeless guy who was apparently beaten by the son of a police lieutenant. Nothing was done until uh, Thurman and others began to agitate, and they got the uh, the uh, lieutenant uh, fired, and ultimately the police chief was fired for not doing enough. The police uh, chief would never have been fired for dragging his feet uh, on the investigation of the black homeless man who was beaten up by the son of a police lieutenant. It was all inside baseball, and Thurman yelled and screamed and got something done. Yet he's this, <laughs> yet he's this racist. Well, that's the thing, and, and this is pretty recent. This isn't something that they buried five years ago. That, that's right, and, you know, there was a murder, a, a gruesome, gruesome murder, series of murders in the, in the 2000s uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, two uh, white students were brutally beaten, raped, uh, tortured, and killed by four black men. Uh, and they didn't file hate crime charges. And the reason the authorities said is that there was no evidence that however horrific uh, this was, there was no 
evidence that they were motivated by race. Indeed, the black men uh, had had white friends. Indeed, they dated white women. Well, if that's the definition of a non-hater, then uh, George Zimmerman certainly is a non-hater, considering he went to a prom with a black woman and had a black business partner and so forth. Well, what about his mother? His mother was Peruvian, and it turns out his great-great-grandfather was black. And that's why the media at first called him white, then called him Jewish, and then they didn't know what to call him because they couldn't <laughs> figure out what box to put him in. Exactly, and that's the problem, is the box. It's the box. And, and why is it that Obama can call himself African-American, but Zimmerman can't call himself Latino? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious if you have a, an answer to that one. No, I sure don't. <laughs> I remember somebody called up once and said, well, what about, what about Zimmerman's father? He was white. I said, okay, what about Obama's mom? <laughs> uh, well, I guess it must be, maybe it's a mother-father thing. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. In the Jewish uh, tradition, it's the mother that oh. determines your ethnicity. Well, and true. George Zimmerman's mother is Peruvian. So, therefore, if we're using the Jewish tradition, then he is a Latino. Wow. That makes it more complicated. It is complicated. <laughs> it now, is. And, and notice the jury uh, and the black alternate all said that race had nothing to do with it from what they can tell. These are six people who were not influenced by the media. They weren't listening to MSNBC. They were sequestered. And they were all apparently surprised when they found out so many people uh, in the media thought this case was about race. They didn't. And the black juror, who's the alternate, apparently I heard he was black, also agreed with the verdict and didn't feel that it had anything to do with race at all. Well, it's interesting, too, because uh, these people were not affected by the media, yet they really hung Zimmerman last year. He didn't really have a chance before the trial, if you look at it that way. Well, well, and, that, and that's exactly right. The, the media had crucified him. And I thought when I first heard this story, I bet you did, too, that the police, uh, the night in question, just said, hey, George, what's up? And he goes, hey, what's going on? I'll, I'll, I'll see you at home. They took him to the station. They handcuffed him. They took him out to the scene the next day. It wasn't like they did a, a you know, a, a half blank uh, examination. That was pretty thorough, mm -hmm. and uh, it vindicates the police the chief who was fired for not uh, pressing charges against uh, against their men. He felt that there wasn't sufficient ground, and that if they had done so, they were not going to prevail in court. He was right. And considering the case with the homeless black man from the year before, the cop they were going after was actually the one of the. I guess one of the officer's sons, That's so right. it, was, it could have been, could have, could have gone completely the other way. It could have, yeah. It was the son of a police lieutenant who beat up a, a black homeless guy. Nothing was done, and George Zimmerman agitated. The other thing, too, about this thing uh, is stand your ground was not used in this trial at all, but people still are upset with the stand your ground law. Obama, as you know, made a reference to it. Uh, we have a couple of resolutions out here by politicians in California uh, uh, refusing to do any business in a state that has a stand your ground law. Well, it turns out when Obama was a state lawmaker in Illinois, he co-sponsored a bill to strengthen the already existing Stand Your Ground law in Illinois. Is this thing on? That was about nine years ago. And now you say that's evolving. Well, he's evolved. You know, <laughs> you don't say politicians lie anymore. You just say they evolved. <laughs> I think that's Obama's favorite word. <laughs> All right. Well, Larry, thank you so much for being here with me today. And tell us a little bit more about your book before we go. Well, uh, I wrote the book because I want people who don't have good relationships with their fathers and people who are fathers who've had bad relationships with their children or non-existent ones to realize the importance of this. Uh, as well-adjusted as I think I am, uh, I'll pause while you laugh, uh, after my dad and I reconciled, I just felt better. I felt happier. I felt uh, more confident. I felt more loved. There is an itch when your father is not around. Tupac Shakur, that well-known neocon, said, I know for a fact if I had a father in my life, I would have had some discipline and I would have been more confident. He also talked about why he started running around with gangs. He wanted structure. He wanted protection. That's the other thing. When your father is not there and you're living in the inner city, who's going to protect you? Who's going to protect you against other people? And that's why a lot of people join gangs if for no other reason than security. We've got to do something about these large number of households who were raised without death. We have to change the laws so that we no longer have these incentives. And we have to uh, do what the George Herbert Walker Bush said, which is a thousand points of light. Uh, and make sure that we volunteer and give money to organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters, 100 Black Men, the National uh, Fatherhood Initiative, which is an organization that I support. There are lots of self-help groups around the country. Uh, we need to empower them and get them in the community to get hands-on assistance. I think empowerment is absolutely key, and yeah. we have to do that. We can, we can start doing that in the media, too, by in, instead of dividing, maybe pulling people together. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you so much. Let's do this again. My pleasure. Let's not let the mainstream media distract us from what's really important. Let's focus on the truth. Get in the answers. Do your homework. Remember, it's a war on for your mind. And finally tonight, in response to Obama's war on whistleblowers, the Oath Keepers are putting up pro-Snowden signs all over the D.C. area, calling on even more whistleblowers to come forward. 
The first sign at the Pentagon Station is done in the style of the theater scene from George Orwell's 1984 and features Director of National Intelligence James Clapper as Big Brother. The sign makes it clear that by exposing the NSA spying on Americans, Snowden honored his oath. The second sign, now in place at Pentagon Station, is aimed directly at CIA employees, reminding them that their oath is not to a corporate culture of secrecy. And the third sign is intended to reach military personnel within the Pentagon and any other government employees who have ever served in the military using the Iwo Jima flag raising as a backdrop to the message. Now you can read more about our top stories by going to Infowars.com, but if you want to learn more about how the mainstream media is deliberately trying to tyrannize our minds, pick up a copy of State of Mind. It is being sold exclusively at the Infowars store. It is being sold exclusively at the Infowars store. Now you can also watch State of Mind if you are a member of Prison Planet TV. And we just want to say thank you so much to all of our subscribers at Prison Planet TV because you allow us to continue telling this truthful news. You can share your username and password with up to 10 other people, so spread the truth. Thank you guys so much for watching the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Leanne McAdoo. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.